Simple question for everybody. How many of you feel like you interact with artificial intelligence every single day? All right, about five. How many of you feel like you are pumping information uh, into the cloud every day that could be used to manipulate your life in some way? Oh, fascinating, interesting. Okay, so there's a combination there. So two things I want to talk about or actually kick this off. The fourth industrial revolution. So this is actually, this is a quote from the current Google CEO, Sundar Pichai, that we are in an AI first world. The fourth industrial revolution, I kind of see it as the sneaky breakthrough moment. It's happening, it has happened. Uh, all the interactions, as you'll see, are actually heavily influenced by artificial intelligence. So let's take a look. First, this is an old phrase we used to use about having myriad data and a dearth of information. Like, I just, I just have a whole bunch of data, but I don't really know what it means. But let's take a deeper look. Data is the fuel of machine learning, how computers learn about what they're doing, what they need to do next, how they should act, how they can win games. Let's take a deeper look. First off, make a separation between data, information, and knowledge. So there could be an abundance of data, but you really don't have any information. If I was to say the stock price of IBM today is whatever, 100, could you act on it? You would say, well, I don't have enough information. I just have data points. So, okay, so data over time is going to give you information on what you should do. But then knowledge is gained from information over uh, an abundance of time in certain situations. Now you're actually thinking about uh, other possibilities outside of just the stock market. Think about the data we actually produce. So there's two different things to think about. One is the data of things, weather, data all the time, temperatures, humidity, It'll, this will all make sense later. Sensors, there are sensors on everything. Anybody here have a Fitbit? Okay, has anybody heard the news recently of Fitbits being used to report on army locations and movements around the world? Okay. Sensors like Fitbit, they're everywhere. We are sensorizing everything. Uh, smart readers, smart meters, the internet of things are all reporting data about our lives. Smart fridges, smart appliances, smart utilities. All of these devices, even engines on machines, our cars, they have system logs, they can all produce data. Have you ever been shopping on something on Amazon and then you went to your Gmail and there's an ad for it, right? We're not quite creeped out about it anymore, right? If this was 15 years ago, I'd be like, what? How do you know what I'm shopping for? Now I'm like, oh yeah, I meant to buy that. But all of these things are talking in the background. But let's talk about you too. So you know your age, you figure out your gender, you might know your weight, your relationship status, you give that up freely, your income you give to the federal government. I know by the census data, people know and can find out and just so you know, the federal government gives up um, income tax data, not, not, but anonymously to data engines to figure out what zip code, what marital status, how much money you make. So guess what? People can target market you. And we'll keep going. Every time you like something, every picture you take and share Every time you click through something, every movie you watch or pause or rewind, everything you purchase, which credit card you use or if you use PayPal, is being recorded and tracked so people can figure out what to market to you, what to sell to you, to make other influential decisions. And we willingly give all this information up. What's really important is this aggregation over time. When you put it in context, you have results. Did I win? Did I lose? Um, this is a fascinating fact. Did you know that when there's a higher amount of smog, the stock market goes down? It's true, it's been proven. Small correlations in how much fine particulates are in the air around Wall Street affects uh, behavior. And so on those days, stock traders uh, aren't as risk uh, taking. So the stock market declines a little bit, just a little bit, but it is noticeable and there is a correlation. So this creates information, information that is actually extremely useful. I have to make this comment because our cybernetic overlook are coming, and they might already be controlling us, but we'll, we'll get into that. But there's massive acceleration in the not just the computing power, but the ability for the computing power we have to discern through all of these piles of information we've been producing in order to make um, meaningful decisions for us. Big data. If you haven't heard of this term, it's kind of what I was mentioning before. We have stockpiles of data. We don't necessarily know how they're correlated, but we're saving it all. We're storing it all. Does anybody know the NSA is storing every communication, every cell phone conversation, every email you have in a $2 billion facility in Utah? 
I, am, I swear I don't believe in aliens. I'm just telling you what's actually happening in the world. They are. They're storing all this information. So we have these pools of data, data that we sometimes we don't know if it's relevant, but we know we have it. Feeding this is the Internet of Things. If you've heard of this, every device, smart televisions, your phones, of course, we are all basically giving up our location data. We're giving up what we, uh, where we're driving, how fast we're going. Uh, you could argue that your device is an Internet of Things for people. But the Internet of Things also applies to, like I mentioned, smart meters, cars. We just have essentially all these sensors reporting on what's happening uh, in the world. Now, robotics is an applied application uh, to using this information in more the physical world. Artificial intelligence is what I'm here to talk about. This is taking all of that data, allowing computers to actually program themselves to learn things. And we don't necessarily, artificial intelligence, the difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning is that we don't know necessarily what the results will be. We program the computer to look for things, to make correlations, to try to figure out something we don't actually know. We don't point it to go play checkers. We point it at an information set and say, say, and say tell me why stock market dips. I shouldn't even say stock market dips. And they say, you know, we found out there was smog on that day. Things like that. That's where artificial intelligence is going. And it's even going farther. So what's good? Let's take, let's take a moment and think about every, does everybody not use Netflix or Hulu or something else? Okay. Let's think about how you used to go to the movies. You used to buy a generic ticket at a theater. Didn't know who you were that went, but with the movie theaters, what the studios knew was that somebody bought a ticket to see a particular movie somewhere in the world, at maybe at that particular movie theater. That was kind of it. And we've seen movies bomb. We've seen, you know, there's been bad movies. What Netflix knows about you, okay, so I know who you are, I know what you watch, I know when you watch it, I know when you start a series, I know if you finish a series. I know what you liked and didn't like, because we put three stars, five stars, we actually put thumbs up, thumbs down. I know when you, now Netflix knows, oh, you're five people in your family, I can tell when you log in and watch a series, but <laughs> your, um, your companion, you chose to watch it without them at some point. I can see that this is actually happening. So what has Netflix done with this information? Has anybody seen House of Cards, Stranger Things? They've gotten into original content. They don't make things that bomb. Why? Because they already know what you like. They already know what you're interested in, and they know who to market it to. Because I know your age, I know your location, I know how many people are in your family, I know that my kids watch way too much on Saturday morning. That is the difference. That's how this information started to be used. So this is still the good, so let's move forward. So um, automated farming, vertical farming, I know how much water I've given a plant, cameras on these plants, I know when they're actually growing, I know what the proper temperature is, I'm using all these sensors. Kyoto, Japan currently has a plant that's producing 10 million, 10 million heads of lettuce uh, in a given year through uh, vertical farming using artificial intelligence. Driverless vehicles, some people would argue driverless Texting means it is a driverless vehicle. Trust me, I do it myself. Um, but actually, it is, this is real. It is happening. Okay, so the car manufacturers are doing it. GM, Ford, um, Google, Apple, Uber, Lyft. Cities across America, these cars are driving presently. Tesla. And not only is Tesla doing automated driving, they're sharing the results of driving and where to turn and what they did, that one car, what it does, Tesla actually reports back to you know, the mothership and then makes improvements to its software so all the other cars suddenly learn from what you drove and how you drove. So the actual auto driving mechanism in Tesla is self-learning and it's adaptive day by day. Ah, the medical field. Nothing is more awash in data about you, your weight, your blood pressure, you know, certain uh, diseases maybe, uh, your genetic diseases, other things you may have. But like for MRIs, scanning MRIs, scanning one, if you wanted one doctor to scan one MRI, or would you like to see a million MRIs scanned and try to find the pattern between them so they can determine if yours uh, is at risk for disease? Currently, computers can, has a 90% accuracy on diagnosing skin cancer. There is no doctor that is that good. This is the one that uh, is pretty impressive. Sorry, AlphaGo. AlphaGo, uh, if you're familiar with chess and checkers, like I mentioned, Go is a, a game a little bit more sophisticated, more strategic. So Google said, they said it can never be um, beaten by a computer. A human couldn't be beaten by a computer. 
Uh, not only did AlphaGo beat a human, uh, actually two out of three within, I think it was in the last two years. They then built AlphaGo Zero, which actually did more deep learning, more artificial intelligence to train itself. It then beat AlphaGo 100 times straight. Then they pointed AlphaGo Zero at a chess, uh, basically just how to play chess. They just gave it instructions. Uh, within eight hours, it, beats, it beat the world's best uh, chess um, computer. So that sounds positive. That seems fun, right? But, uh, let's, let's see what the other side of this is. The flash crash. Now, this was eight years ago. High frequency trading algorithms. If you're not familiar with this, stock, the stock market is not controlled by humans saying, I want to buy stock. They are controlled by algorithms that are programmed to use artificial intelligence to say, hmm, it's, there's weather here. This is going to affect butter futures. I see information about the Nikkei index. How is that going to affect the stock price? The problem is those bots actually trade against each other. I actually came out of the high frequency trading business years ago. They actually put simulated fake trades to see what your bot is going to do against my bot. Now my trades are battling each other. This flash crash was actually the Dow lost 10% of market value for about 12 minutes uh, back in 2010. They say 60% of all trades on stock markets are actually done by high frequency trading algorithms. Whew. I wouldn't want to be killed by a robot, but in the Geneva, where they have the Geneva Convention just last month, Autonomous, lethal um, robotic systems is a big concern. We're familiar with drones, but the actual button that says I should drop this bomb, it still has human intervention. They're now trying to prevent those going to the mind of a computer. Say, well, I see an intruder, I, I should shoot this person. It's kind of like RoboCop, but this is, this is very real. This is both with air warfare, missiles, uh, and, and ground-based systems. There is, if you're familiar with Elon Musk, who runs Tesla, Bill Gates with Microsoft, Stephen Hawking, uh, the, the famous physicist, they have all been warning extensively against a robotic future uh, of warfare. Strange thing is, you know who leads in the development of uh, autonomous weapon systems? The United States. Do you know who then is following suit because we've led the charge? China, Russia. High confidence Russia interfered. Whether or not there was collusion is not the question here. The ability for a foreign nation to buy ads to make sure what you click on and what you like influences what you see and how you perceive to then make you act and do something that maybe you wouldn't have done uh, is an effect of artificial intelligence. So if you've seen Facebook in the news is changing their news feed. They're trying to, uh, they're trying to dial back actually all that automated news that you're receiving. I don't know, this is, kind of leads me into the weird. There is an AI religion, I kid you not. It's funny, it's actually WTF, but uh, I, don't, I don't know what to do about that. Uh, but the way of the future, basically saying that intelligence shouldn't be just limited to a biological intelligence. Will we not have a higher power that has all this information, all this calculation power? Isn't that a higher intelligence that we then almost become robots for? So now the weird, I can't explain some of this stuff, but. The best restaurant in London by TripAdvisor didn't even exist. That's right, some guy thought it would just be funny to create an address, create a phone number, put an ad online, and he gamed the system. People would call him to make reservations. He'd say, no, sorry, we're full, sorry, we're full. Oddly, people gave good reviews to it and kept pumping it up, pumping it up. It was the number one reviewed restaurant in London. It, it, it was his literal shed, and it did not exist. Has anybody heard the story of Alexa dialing 911? So it was a domestic, domestic violence abuse, and somehow the cops just showed up. And they said, well, Alexa wasn't able to uh, make a voice call. Like, well, somebody called 911. And we could actually hear the arguments, so somebody in this home dialed 911. So it's like, did Alexa just uh, intervene? I don't know. Tay, the Microsoft AI that they put out there to communicate as a chat box, became a racist and a sexist within uh, eight hours, and they had to shut it off. Language creation. So they had AI bots to actually talk to each other and chat to each other. They started talking in their own language. They were still using English, but then they started to use their own manipulation of English to actually make it faster to talk to each other. Elon Musk, as I mentioned before, uh, is actually a big, he's very much against the, the future of AI because he's very much concerned what the impact could be to humanity. So he's actually built a company called Neuralink, they're just forming, uh, to help build brain computer interfaces for humans. So we can, take all this we can take all this information and actually uh, use that information ourselves. How, I'm not too sure. There is AI creative arts, there is music. 
here's where it gets weird. If you get run over by an autonomous car, if you get shot by an autonomous gun, who's really to blame? Is it the company that built it? Is it the programmer? Like, you know, the entire legal system is based on somebody being accountable for that action. Now it's actually artificial intelligence. One thing about the fourth industrial revolution is that AI has been said to increase GDP by 17 trillion. But the workforces of advanced economies, they rely on those financial jobs, like I mentioned, that are going to be easily, actually easy, easily replaced. And this is a 2030 estimate, so we're talking only in 12 years. You have high skill, high pay jobs, actually, that will still be promoted, people that actually be coding these things, maybe it's more sophisticated type of work that can't be replaced by AI, but really low skill, low uh, pay jobs, this disparity will continue to increase. We always talk about the wealth gap and people who recovered from the last recession. This is just going to escalate even more and more. The, the upside is there will be, we talk about um, massive elimination of waste in the supply chain to know who needs what and when and where. The logistics behind this is becoming far more sophisticated. I'll have to say this too, this is not something we're going to stop. It is in the benefit of every company to do this, to eliminate this waste. There is really no stopping the progress that we're making in artificial intelligence. Just a thought, think about what we do to try to prevent nuclear weapons from getting out of hand. If you had a proliferation of artificial intelligence-based weapons that are actually smaller, easier to smuggle, but some despot in some country could easily you know, suppress people with it, probably be a higher proliferation of those weapons. One thing I will say is China is betting bigger than we are. So the impact that on the US, China will actually have a double their GDP impact because they're making a bigger bet on artificial intelligence. So let's think about this for a second. AI tools are available for everybody to use. Google has them, Facebook has them. You can go out there, open source, you can go on the cloud right now and start using them. These aren't mystery programs that people uh, you know, are hiding somewhere. And why? Because they want your data. The more you use it, the more they'll collect your data. So if my choices are already being selected and filtered, the news I choose to read, the routes I choose to drive, the movies that are being chosen for me, if I'm being influenced, I obviously can get fake data, uh, potentially, like that restaurant. If my decisions are being based on what I read and experience, if my education, my news could be faked, right, but it is being selective for me uh, by artificial intelligence, sometimes even written by Heliofacts. The food, it's actually feeding me those farms, the distribution logistics, I'm kept alive with that early detection to make sure I live nice and long. But at some point, I could be given false data. My Apple map, or actually, don't use Apple maps. Uh, my Google map could drive me off into a bad part of town. I could be shot by an AI robot. Am I already living in an artificial intelligence world? That's all I got. So thank you.